the Kabalega airport, which will handle oil-related cargo, was supposed to be handed over to the government on 17 February 2023. However, it extended by 11 months. This is according to Amos Murisa, the spokesperson for SBC Uganda, a company that was contracted to develop this airport. The contract period is, is take, uh, four years and ten months. So we should have delivered this project by 17 of February 2023. But because of some challenges I will talk about, we've been given an extension of, say, more than eight months. So we expect this project ready by September, October of this year. When we go down physically, you look, the runway is almost 99% complete. We are just only remaining with marking. Some of the structures are ready. Others that are not ready are going to be worked on in the second phase. Marissa says the delay was as a result of the loss of time during rainy seasons and COVID-19 lockdown, where the company was forced to lay down some workers. It could not be enough to complete the, the, the whole project. An, ex, an, an extra funding was requested. But the government could not raise that much money as fast as possible. This is why the construction of the airport has been put into phases. Now, the air traffic control tower is going to come in the second phase. But engineers, both from Uganda Civil Aviation Authority and the consultants, have advised that we put the rest of the infrastructure ready, then they are going to put gadgets here in connection with the gadgets of Entebbe, and they control flights as the government gets money to construct a fixed control tower on site. I think I'm clear about that one. So the, the air traffic control tower is going to come in the second phase. Actually, it is the major, major component that is still remaining. So it will come in the second phase. But as of now, what we are struggling to put across is the readiness of the airport to start handling flights. And then we construct the fixed control tower in the second phase. The airport is close to border and there has been concerns over the planes entering DRC airspace. But Morissa explains that once the airport starts operating, receiving cargo planes, they will be taking off facing an opposite direction to avoid entering the airspace of DRC. We need like four kilometers, I mean 40 kilometers, to turn and follow the coordinates. Now, here where the runway begins from, DRC is like 20 kilometers. So that means if it takes off to what is this direction, it will find itself in the airspace the Gabon. of DRC. Oh. Of Gabon. <laughs> and that would mean some tourists. So the cargo planes, the big ones, will always go back and turn from there and take off this direction. But the smaller ones, you saw, you saw that jump at that side. The smaller ones, it can as well go like this, turn from there and go. In 10 kilometers, it turns and goes. But the big cargo planes will have to take over, to take off this direction, over the that flat land of Ugoma for the This was revealed during a guided tour for all government communicators organized by the Petroleum Authority of Uganda. Alan Sempebwa, the Public Relations Officer of Uganda National Roads Authority, has noted that as the UNRA, they are going to embark on constructing access roads in the industrial areas, starting with the 3.5-kilometer access road. Sempebwa says the government is going to construct over 700 kilometers to support the oil industry. Uh, you may have noticed the amazing work done here, that the runway is nearly complete. Uh, our part now as UNRWA you know, is build the 3.5 kilometer access to the Kabalega International Airport. Uh, contracting is nearly ready. By the start of this financial year, July, we should have the contractor uh, start with works on the access road, which will be 3.5 kilometers. That uh, program is ongoing. We have progressed. There are no major bottlenecks now, meaning the oil partners, players, contractors can bring in their equipment without major interruptions of access and connectivity issues. In other words, the equipment can now come in because all the major bottlenecks have been, have been worked on. The project is being funded by UK lenders identified as Standard Chartered Bank with guarantees from the United Kingdom Export Finance who agreed to lend Uganda 307 million euros and after compilation it is going to be the second international airport in the country alongside Entebbe International Airport. Why I'm saying all this 